Continuing coverage this morning of the newly released video now making national news. Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fry authorized the release of body camera video late last night showing the police shooting of Thurman Blevins. Mayor Fry says it was important to get that video out to the public as a matter of transparency. We do have team coverage this morning and we're going to get to that in just one minute. But as you watch the story, let us know. Does the video change your perception of this case? You can go to care11.com slash vote now. But first First, we are going to get a quick check of your Monday morning weather with Sven. Yeah, we've got clear skies to start 63 degrees this morning. A little patchy fog developing actually as things cool off out there this morning with calm winds. Later in the day, we're going to look for a couple instability showers again like yesterday. Uh, so after 2, 3 o'clock, watch out for maybe one or two of those thunder showers to dodge. All right, Sven, thank you. And now back to the big story of this morning. Police body camera footage from the shooting death of Thurman Blevins is now public. A lot of people in the community were pushing for this, including the mayor. Last month, police took a 911 call about a man allegedly shooting a gun into the air and ground near 46 and Lindale Avenue North. Officers Ryan Kelly and Justin Schmidt arrived and chased Blevins into an alley and shot him. Care Levin's Kaya Edwards continues our coverage with a look at the footage. Three video files were made public. The body camera video from each officer and a third video labeled stabilized and analyzed video, which includes freeze frames and slow motion during certain parts. We want to warn you, some of the video is difficult to watch. Inside the squad car, the officer spot Blevins and note what he's wearing. Seconds later, one of the officers says he's got a gun. They quickly jump out of the car. The stabilized and analyzed video is slowed down and circles an object that appears to be in Blevins' pocket. Now, before we show you the chase, please know that the pops you hear at the beginning are the officer's audio peaking, not gunfire. What the I don't want to shoot you! Put your hands up! Put your hands up! Put your hands the officers chase Blevins for 34 seconds before the stabilized and analyzed video circles an object that appears to be in Blevins' right hand. The officers then fire about 15 shots. After the shooting, a third officer says, cover me while I kick the gun, and the video shows him kicking a metallic object away from Blevins' body. The Blevins family did see the video before it was made public. We're working on getting reaction from family and the community. Now, Mayor Jacob Fry met with reporters last night to explain why it was important to get that video out to the public quickly. Yeah, Kaya, the mayor also acknowledged that there's a lot of pain right now in the city. We just witnessed a traumatic video in which Thurman Blevins was shot and killed. Regardless of the circumstances and facts that took place on the afternoon of June 23rd, and regardless of how our own life experiences and backgrounds inform the conclusions we draw, let us all recognize one conclusion. A life was lost, and that in and of itself is a tragedy. Minneapolis police released a statement saying that the case is still an active criminal investigation and they can't comment publicly, but that the chief will, quote, remain engaged, active and listen throughout the community. Connect with us online and on social media for in-depth coverage of this case. We'll also have an expert analysis of the videos coming up in our next half hour. Chris. Now for your morning headlines. A massive sinkhole shut down a part of Kellogg Boulevard near East Jackson and St. Paul. A water main break created the road hazard. Water is now shut off at nearby homes and businesses, but is expected to be restored today. However, Kellogg Avenue near the spot of the sinkhole will be closed for at least two days, which could mean a work week headache for many. In downtown Minneapolis, U of M police say a homeless man rescued a woman who jumped from a bridge. It happened early Saturday morning. Police say the homeless man heard the woman fall from the Washington Avenue bridge and jumped in after her. She was taken to a hospital for treatment. Today, Malaysia will release the long anticipated report into the disappearance of Malaysia Airlines flight MH370. The plane vanished in March 2014 while flying to Beijing from Kuala Lumpur with 239 people on board, becoming one of the world's greatest aviation mysteries. Chris, thank you. 6.05 and it's time now for our digital dive. The deadly wildfires continue to rage in California after an excessive heat wave this weekend. 
These flames have killed six people, including two firefighters and two young children. Firefighters say their battle is far from over. Now, here's the latest picture from the Cal Fire from just a few hours ago. Take a look at this. 95,000 acres have burned and the fire is only 17% contained. So a lot of people are asking, why is this fire so difficult to, to fight? Well, the intensity of the heat, they've created fire whirlwinds. Take a look at this video. You can see all of that heat and the smoke tour or turning flames and even uprooting trees in that area. And it's a daunting battle for all the firefighters there. This is a photo of a crew. They were up through the night trying to defend several homes. And once the flames were out, they got in a quick nap in a neighboring yard, taking any moment they can to get in rest in this endless fight. So yeah, we're getting a lot of images coming from the California wildfires. And what's uh, horrible about this whole thing too, not only the lives lost, but Mother Nature not on their side for this one because there's no rain in the forecast. It's still going to be hot and dry. So not helping them out. Yeah, it's been hot and dry there for years. I yeah. mean, the drought in that area is incredible. Those firefighters taking a well-deserved rest there. Right now, let's check our one thing weather. Sven, what do you have? Yeah, we've got uh, some sunshine for most of the day today, but just like yesterday, we're going to see those cumulus clouds build as we head into the afternoon, heating up uh, 83 today, and that's going to lead to maybe one or two stray showers uh, in the late afternoon, so maybe watch out for that, but otherwise, a uh, decent day. And the one thing you need to know about traffic right now, there is a crash on 94 eastbound at Weaver Lake Road near Maple Grove. It is causing a bit of a slowdown, but is off to the left shoulder. You can see the slowdown there, so it might take you a little longer to get to work this morning. Chris, thank you. In other news this morning, a small town in North Dakota, they are in a panic over a missing python. I'd be a little freaked out too. The seven foot snake escaped from its enclosure and it could be hiding in trees or culverts. So this happened in Foreman, North Dakota, and people are being warned to watch out for their pets and kids. The story is getting attention online from far and wide, and so some of the folks in Foreman are trying to use it to their advantage, telling people to come see what else the town has to offer. You get that snake under control before I'm going to do that. Hard pass till you catch the snake. A homeless man has some new hope after holding up this sign. You can see it right there. He uh, asks for people to take his resume rather than give him any money. Cool idea and it worked. David Cesares is an unemployed software developer in California. After someone saw his sign, they posted it online. I knew it was going to be posted on social media. I just didn't know, you know it was going to blow up the way it did. I'm trying not to take any money. You know, I, I really do want just a job opportunity, you know. So that's that's really, you know, what I'm all that's all I'm asking. Now that was retweeted more than 100,000 times and now David says he's already received 200 job offers from places like Google and Netflix. Now you guys, I think a lot of people pointing out he has advantages other pe homeless people do not. Sure. He has a college degree, he's a software developer. Yeah. Still pretty cool to give this guy a shot. Yeah, I mean the way he went about it for sure. And mm -hmm. it's you know incredible in this time we live in that a software developer is not only out of a job but homeless. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not a, a cheap area to live either. So. Right. No, that's right. Well,